Hey everyone, it's Matt Carl at Leroy Heritage Museum, and today we are here in what will be the gift shop uh, in the new museum inside the old hotel. And I don't think I've done much uh, talking about this room in the past, or even showing much of this room in the past besides some photographs. So we're going to talk about this room today, what we've done in here, a little bit of history of this one room, and uh, what's what's going on here. So. Um, first of all, the background on this room, uh, this was the hotel dining room, and, uh, when a person entered the hotel, they would have come through the front door, and then through this doorway that's right here, and they would have come into this room. Now, above this door... Right here is what might look to you like a transom window, but actually what was there originally was a hand-painted glass, uh, a kind of reverse-painted glass uh, that faced the front door. And uh, when people came in, um, it's my understanding that it said Lewis House on it. And uh, this was a public area of the house. And uh, so when you came in, you came in through this front entryway where the main stairway is. And if you notice that in this front entryway, there is uh, this wainscoting along the floor. And that wainscoting actually originally carried right into the dining room. And you can see uh, in some places where that had continued around the walls in here. It is now all gone, and uh, there's several reasons or several things that took place to cause that. So, I will insert some pictures of uh, what the house looked like back around 2004 when... Uh, there was an auction held here, and I came to the auction then and took some pictures inside the house. And uh, one of the pictures uh, of this room was taken looking in this direction at this wall here. And uh, in that picture, you see two windows on the left side uh, and also a pass-through, uh, sliding pass-through window in the wall to the right of those windows. And that was originally a pass-through into the kitchen, which would have been about right in this area here. And that uh, would raise up and you could pass dishes through there and right into the kitchen and onto the counter and the sink was in that part of the kitchen, and so you could um, take them right straight through and to wash dishes there. So that was an interesting feature. It's not there, as you can see. So the reason why there is no wainscoting in here and uh, why this room is all torn apart the way it is when other rooms around it are not is the story starts back uh, around 2006 and that is when the house was uh, ultimately for sale and during the time that it was for sale no one was living here and um, through a um, series of events the power got shut off and uh, the plumbing in the upstairs bathroom, which would be right up above us, right up here. The plumbing for that bathroom, which is all, all new now, but back then was old plumbing. The plumbing broke, the water came down through the ceiling, and uh, flooded this whole first floor of the house. And um, so you can see in some areas, you can still see there are 
marks along the baseboard where the water line was. You can see that along there. And the water ran out the front door and down the front steps and uh, really caused havoc in here. In the front two rooms, through the, the door there at the center of the picture, through that way, those two front rooms had hardwood flooring in them. The room in here, in the dining room and the front hall, had a li older linoleum style material in there. And all of that was completely saturated the hardwood floors and the linoleum floors and everything. And then the water ran down through the floors into the basement. And in the basement, all of the uh, ceilings in the basement had drywall on them because uh, when this was made into a rest home years ago, that was something that was required to be done for fire purposes. And so although the water soaked all of that, um, drywall in the basement and then ran on down through and it was just an absolute mess and so at the time uh, someone was looking to, to purchase the property they ultimately did and one of the first things that they had to do was tear out all of the floors in here all of the drywall and the basement ceilings um, and run dehumidifiers constantly throughout the place and uh, try to get, try to save the place, basically. It really had caused a lot of problems. So fortunately, that got done, and uh, the house was saved in that sense, although a lot of hard work had to be done by the previous owners in order to uh, do that. Um, but in the process of the pipes breaking, the wall here, uh, was completely saturated and a lot of water ran down along the edge of especially this back wall completely water soaked the um, pass-through window there and basically ruined it although we still have it uh, the finish was stripped stripped off of it. It, a lot of the wood was warped um, and then the wainscoting that ran around the bottom was mostly ruined this a uh, piece over here in between these two doors was actually still okay, but there was um, a lot of it was damaged. And so the previous owners ended up uh, removing all of it eventually. And so by the time we got here, um, the previous owners had re drywalled this room and put carpet down in here. And it was all a finished room um, by that point. I'll put up another picture to show what it was looking like at that time. And uh, that photo looks in just about this direction. And so it was a finished room. And this doorway here where that painted window was was covered up. And by the way, we have the door that goes on here. We currently have it off, and we're protecting it somewhere else. It has a glass window in it, and so we don't want it to get damaged. It's kind of a unique door. That will be going back on once the renovation is done. But once we got here, all of the work that had to have been done into this room, it just wasn't anything that would work for the museum. So we ended up uh, taking off the drywall, especially on two of the walls, this side wall here and this back wall over here. And the reason for that is because we had to have a firewall on those two walls and also on the ceiling. Now we were going to leave the ceiling drywall up there and just drywall over it until one day, uh, while after we owned it, that uh, we discovered that the shower that was in the upstairs bathroom above here, uh, the drain in the shower um, had come apart down inside the floor and was draining water down into the ceiling. And it had been running down on top of the drywall 
until such time as it decided to break through the drywall over on this end about here where the insulation is pulled back and then it's, it was draining down the wall down through the floor and into the furnace room so yet again we had a disaster in here and we ended up tearing out all of the dry the drywall that had been put on the ceiling and at that point the only drywall then left was on this far wall over here and there was no point in in keeping that anymore particularly because uh, this doorway had been enclosed and uh, the drywall didn't quite fit uh, around it to finish it so we ended up taking that off and ended up leaving this final wall here as the only one left from the previous renovation uh, that wall happens to have been foam insulated so we didn't want to take that off so that that is remaining all of the other walls had to be redone but it was probably a good thing uh, anyway because then it allowed us to redo uh, electrical to the way that we wanted it done redo lighting um, outlets put new outlets in where they needed to be for special things that we're going to be doing this is going to be the gift shop and so we have um, uh, not only displays for products but um, there's going to be a digital display on the wall over here by this door this wall here that has the drywall on it will be displaying things for sale and of course other places around here we've built a closet in this area and that will be to store gift shop products and then there will be a counter in front of that and so when you come to the museum here you will be entering through the back door which will be the main entrance door shown here and that door was put in where one of the original windows were there were two windows side by side we took one out and put a door in there that will be the main entrance also the handicapped entrance there will also be access from the front door although the front door we will not be having open to the public because it's right on the highway and it's just uh, uh, dangerous to use for that purpose so we're we're going to try to stay away from doing that so that's a little bit of background on this room now of course this wasn't the only disaster or the only couple of disasters that have taken place in this general area of the house on the other side of the wall uh, over here there was uh, a door right here and we filled it in and uh, the door right there went through to the kitchen um, and so we closed that in and the kitchen back in 1993 uh, caught on fire one morning as a result of a grease fire the Canton Fire Department came out but the fire ended up being put out really before they got here but the smoke damage particularly um, really caused havoc throughout the kitchen and uh, the, into the dining room and so this dining room had been redone after that um, fire had occurred and of course the kitchen had been redone at the same time but fortunately that fire was stopped before it it uh, spread throughout the house nevertheless that's another of the major disasters that seem to have taken place in these couple of rooms so we're hoping that that will be the final problem that we will have to deal with in here but um, we've got uh, the plumbing redone in the ceiling um, electrical redone in this whole part of the house the fire system everything is is all set we've had electrical put in for emergency exit signs and lights um, we've redone all the outlets in this room
And so we're ready for inspection in here. We just have a few minor things to tie up, but then when the uh, time comes that the pandemic situation subsides, we will be able to get in, uh, get an inspector in here and be able to move on then to drywall. So we're looking forward to that. So when this is done, this will be a pretty good sized gift shop and a good introduction to the museum. And then uh, when you come to the museum, you'll come through this gift shop and then continue through this door and this door will be the opening to the rest of the museum. You'll, you'll go out through this door and then explore the rooms uh, through the first floor and then up the stairs to the second floor into the ballroom and the hallway and so on. And uh, so there'll be lots, uh, lots of things to see and uh, we're looking forward to that. Not sure if I've ever showed it, I don't think I have, but on this video I'll show that through this doorway here into the front room there are pocket doors between the two front rooms and those will remain so that uh, both of these front rooms will be exhibit spaces. This here in the corner had been turned into a closet before, just before we got here, just months before we got here. And there's one actually on either side of this wall, which we tore out. And uh, we will be cleaning that up and uh, then uh, spackling and repainting this room. But these two front rooms don't really require a whole much, a whole lot of things, just some drywall repair, but uh, these rooms, uh, at least this one, was drywalled in the past, so it is was not necessary to do a whole lot in here other than uh, just take the carpet out that had been redone. Of course, all these rooms here had radiators in them. We took all the radiators out of here, and we had forced air heating and cooling put in it's an air-to-air -air heat pump with a backup system of an oil uh, furnace, a boiler system in the basement. And uh, so you can see the, the air uh, in the floor, coming out of the floor. Um, and so that will work a lot better than what uh, we had in here before. And we'll be able to control the temperature a lot better. And, that will be a good thing for this space. So a lot of work has been done in this uh, this one room particularly, the whole house especially, but in this one room particularly there's been a lot of work done and uh, so we'll be looking forward to getting this room all closed in and uh, getting it useful again and looking like the way it should. Uh, we've had it opened up now since shortly after we acquired the place, and so it's been look it's been in this condition for probably four years now, and uh, so the house has been in a constant state of renovation even long before we got here, and we've kind of picked it up and continued it, but uh, we're getting closer to uh, being able to. Um, see the finish line. So we're looking forward to that. Now some people ask um, and have asked in the past when we did our first building, uh, wouldn't it be easier to just build a new building? I mean look at all of the work that you have to do to make these buildings usable. Uh, wouldn't it make sense to just build a new building and to waste your time on doing something like this? And the answer to that is an absolute no. And here's the reason why. If you've worked be with these buildings before, and especially in the context of a nonprofit organization, um, you might be aware of the fact that in order to get grant funding for something like a building project for a, an organization like this, you have to be renovating a historic building. You cannot get grant money to buy new buildings, to build new buildings for this type of purpose. So in order to do anything at all 
you have to fall within guidelines that uh, grant money can be given for. And so uh, renovating a historic building is one of those. And um, so that, that makes it possible for us to acquire a place like this and uh, rehab it into something that is useful for the community and uh, uh, for years to come. So that is um, why we do this. But of course, a historic building also has a backstory to go with it. And so not only do you use it to have your exhibits and uh, um, programming and whatnot, but you can also uh, tell the story of what the place used to be. So in effect, the building itself becomes an entire exhibit on its own, even without adding the things that you have on display. And uh, so that's why it, it makes sense for an organization like this to acquire an older building and fix it up. Is it a lot more work to do? Uh, in some cases, yes. Um, but considering, in this case, the square footage that uh, we have here, um, we're talking about 5,600 square feet just for the main two living area, or main two floors of the building. But uh, if you add the attic space, which ultimately can be used for uh, storage and uh, um, a large basement that could be used for uh, uh, workshop type uh, activities, um, you have over 9,000 square feet of space in this one building. Now the cost of building a building that is over 9,000 square feet for a nonprofit organization to come up with that kind of funds uh, without having access to grant funding, that doesn't make any sense, nor is it even possible unless uh, uh, you have uh, funding and you're independently wealthy and able to do that. But in most cases, nonprofits are not in that position. So uh, we have been able to to do these these projects, the Grange, and then now this building, um, with a lot of help from uh, grant funding, in addition to donations from uh, many generous members of the public. But the grant funding makes it possible for you to go that much further in completing parts of the project. Um, a lot of them, if not most of them, require a match to get it done and uh, you uh, come up with as much as you can come up with for funds and then if you can find grant money to match that with, that moves you along down the road that much further. So that's kind of the story on why it's worth taking time to uh, uh, renovate and restore an older building rather than to build from scratch. Um, this building in particular has an, a fascinating story um, to go with it, uh, particularly being built from lumber on Barkley Mountain um, and uh, being owned by uh, the brothers that owned the sawmill that sawed lumber. And uh, so there's a lot of interesting information, not to mention the fact that this was uh, open to the public in the past. It was a hotel, it was a store, there was a post office here, um, the ballroom upstairs, and uh, of course all the other things it was used for after the hotel was here. So the public had uh, a lot of use of this building in the past, and uh, so this is going to make it uh, useful to the public once again, and we're um, looking forward to that. Uh, it's a pretty unique place. It's a pretty large place for an individual person to maintain if someone were living here uh, privately as a private home. And um, so it works well for a nonprofit organization for a use such as a museum like this to be able to uh, put it together and use it for exhibits and programming and that type of thing. So we're 
looking forward again to using it for many years to come. So that's uh, an overview of the gift shop room. And again, we will come back another time and we'll talk about another room inside the hotel. So thanks again for joining me and see you next time.